Everybody who is an Eric fan, this is all for you. So ladies and gentlemen, the Orders of the Assassins, Book 1, The Hitmen, and welcome to the wonderful world of Eric, a fabulous witch. So remember, I am not a professional narrator, so be kind to me, and hopefully you guys enjoy. What do you guys think? Let's go. Chapter 1. Blood flowed down his abs as the scorching water hit his body. It was hard to tell if the blood was Eric's or his last target. Did it make a difference? There wasn't enough soap or boiling water to wash away the memory of his kills. 18 months. Eric had been chasing witches, wizards, traitors, and the likes for the last 18 months of his life. All on behalf of the Order. He slammed his fist up against the towels of the shower and immersed himself under the water. His bruised knuckles split open again. Fresh blood mixed with the trails already running down his body. His dark hair was matted, probably from guts, maybe brain matter. The result was the same, dead bodies. Everywhere and still, no lead. Sorry guys. He was tired of the chase, the games, the intrigue, of everything. The madness of it all was eating away to his soul, if he still had one. At this point, he was beyond himself. In his 173 years of living, this was the first time Eric had truly hated his existence and his skills. Yes, he was a great witch, but by the looks of it, he was an even better killer. Eric continued his ritual, soaking his head with shampoo as, as if that could raise the memory of the tension in his mind. His bride wouldn't let him admit it out loud, but he missed Texarkana. Hey, everybody in Texas, big shout out. This is for you. The man is the Reaper's ink will be a welcome relief in exchange for the life he'd been living. He never intended to become the Otis assassin, or the Avenging Angel. For as old as he was, he was still making foolish mistakes. Did he honest, honestly believe he could help his people after the blows they suffer? No. Eric knew better. He was running away. The water cooled and Eric knew it drilled. Once the water turned cold, it was time to step back into the real world, to forget his life as the cop in Texas, the last one he embraced, and don the mask of calculated bastard. If Isis was right, it, was, it wasn't hard for him to become distant and disregard people. He actually missed her and regret, regretted never telling her how he felt. Damn Constantine and Virginia, Eric told himself for the hundredth time as he stepped outside the shower and let the cool air dry his body. The guardian of the interns and death's right-hand man, Constantine, was not one to be crossed. The five thousand year old cat had more money, power, and influence than God himself. If Eric believed in the Almighty... It might impress them. But when Constantine hired him to train the newly made intern, he gave strict instruction to never get involved with her. Eric didn't see a problem with that. He never expected to fall for her. Isis Black was insufferable, impulsive, and opinionated. Yet, Isis made him see the good in people again. If Constantine wasn't enough, let's be honest to say this, that should be enough. The too good, the too high for her own good intern was related to the most improbable person alive. How could he have known that she would be the goddaughter of Virginia Black, the high priestess of the Order of the Witches? Could his life be more demented? The cell phone screamed the ringtone, Hell's Bells by ACDC. Eric took a deep breath to settle himself. The ringtone could only mean one thing, and he wasn't going to rush to answer the phone. Striding naked through his apartment, he headed towards the kitchen. It was six in the morning, and since he'd been up all night, he needed a coffee. Duke could wait. The smell of the Jamaican coffee was intoxicating. It was official. His animated coffee maker was his new best friend. Eric poured, Eric poured a cup and inhaled the decadent brew. He didn't care that the lake was boiling. Deep down, Eric prayed that the raft of the coffee could burn away the vial he felt burning inside of his throat. Mm, no luck, Eric told himself, as just as his cell, fell, cell phone rang again causing his insides to turn. I know you're ignoring me. Duke's heavy European accent came across the speaker as soon as Eric answered. I just got in, Eric replied. You can't possibly have another lead for me. I have something better, Duke replied. Doubted, but let me hear it. Eric placed the cup down and used his power to heal his wounds. The skin on his hands mended and he could feel the ribs snapping back in place. If he was going out again, he didn't have time to natural healing. Eric doubted he'd remember how that actually worked anymore. Are you listening to me? Duke shouted. Eric had blocked the man out and missed all the details. Sorry, man. I was trying to heal here. You're great at that, Duke admitted in a softer tone. You should have been a healer instead. 
instead of an assassin? Eric finished for him. Both men avoided the conversation, knowing it was only pointless to dwell on the bad choices. Regardless how many times you fix the body, humans always die. Sounds like you've been there. Dick was in a very talkative mood. Eric was not. What's the deal, Duke? I want to crash before I have to face another battle. We found him, Duke whispered. Are you sure? Eric knew exactly who Duke was referring to. The arrogant bastard thinks he's untouchable, to continue. He's collecting an army of low-life wannabes, which is with no talent. You need to take your Raphael. The priestess wants his head on a platter. Didn't think Virginia was one for channeling her inner Solomon, Eric smirked. He didn't blame her. Too many good people had died because of Raphael's betrayal. That makes the only quote in the Bible reference she ever quotes. Duke answer. That asshole has ongoing date every Friday night at the village underground in Greenwich. I know the place. Eric had lived in New York City several times and, had, and was familiar with the new comedy club. He remembered when he played, when it was a place that plays Spanish rock, to the drunken color students in the village hippies. Anything you need? Duke had the excitement of a teenage at a prom. Send me an appointment with Mr. Lorenzo, Eric replied. Again? Duke choked. Man, how many suits can you destroy in one month? So remember, I said this was first initially part of an anthology, so here's the beginning of the reference, so this is where we're going with that. Do you want to do my job or what? Eric was in no mood to defend himself from a man who only wore sweatpants and crop tops. Do you even own jeans? Fuck you, Eric, Duke answered. Yeah, that's what I thought. Eric sipped the rest of his coffee. Let me know, let him know I'll be there at his shop around one. Will do. Do you need any weapons? Duke was back to acting like a guinea cheerleader. Last time I checked, I'm the weapon. Eric, Eric is thumbing his fully healed body. If his magic ever failed, which never happened, he was physically strong enough to take on an ox. There was no doubt he was deadly. If that was in effect, I would say you are an arrogant asshole as well. Duke told him, oh, I'm definitely that, Eric said, not apologizing for his attitude. But I'm also as good as it gets, so why bother the nine and text me any important details and don't call me until tomorrow. Yes, Master Eric, whatever you say, almighty one, Duke replied, full of sarcasm. Go to hell, Duke, and don't call me back. Eric disconnected the call before the two of them banter for another hour. He poured himself another cup of coffee. He wanted a nap before heading out for the day. It had been over a month since he had a stay at the apartment, which meant there was no food anywhere. Besides the coffee. To make this worse, the place smelled of mildew. He wondered if the cleaning lady ever aired it out. He could cleanse it with magic, but he doubted he would be in town long enough to enjoy it. New York City was strange in the early morning. For the city that never sleeps, early mornings were eerie in their quietness. Eric could sense all the residents in their building, either sleeping or slowly waking up. He let his senses trail the enchantment and securities around his apartment. He needed to make sure no person or thing could sneak up on him while he slept. Taking one last sip of his coffee, he healed. Him. He headed to bed. He didn't bother with clothes. After everything he'd been through, modesty was something he cared nothing about.